It's been a good start. Are we back? Just say, just say when we're back. Hey, Nathan. Yeah. Good now. Excellent. Yeah. We'll start we again. Start Hello, again? everybody. Hello. <laughs> it's been a fantastic start. No technical issues. We promise no, everything no, is whatsoever. fine. Last week it would, was all fine. It wouldn't yeah. be nature's BS if it wasn't for technical issues. Come on, let's, exactly. be, let, let's be fair. That's what the BS stands for. Or does it? <laughs> um, yeah, hope everyone had a lovely week or two weeks. Um, yeah, so how has your week been, Andy? I've, I've had two snow days. I haven't been at work. Mm. So Cold snow all hope, of a sudden. I hope everybody else had fantastic snow. We had five inches here. It oh was amazing. Wow. So... I had some... No snow here right on the coast in North Wales. We had a very intense hailstorm this morning at like 6am. Uh, but the mountains are lovely and snowy. Excellent. That's really nice to see. Hmm. Tiny bit today, says Pookie. We had hail and no snow, says Nathan. Mm, hmm. Okay. How was John Vulture down in Brighton? Maybe. I'm, I'm, I expecting, the... I'm expecting yeah. a bit of snow down there. So I would hope so anyway. I saw that the weather warning was like the top of North Wales, Northern England, Southern Scotland area. But hopefully, case in other words. Hello, Barnacle. Hey, Barnacle. Well, everyone how, here tonight. Lovely. Yeah. How, how was your snow? That's true, Barnacle. You got some great snow up there. You can have some of my snow if you want. I'd love it. <laughs> Share it amongst everyone else here. I, I love snow. It's great. Mm -hmm. I went to bed on Monday night and I was like, oh, it's snowing. This is nice. And then uh, I went to bed early because I, I was supposed to be up early in the morning to get ready for work. And then oh, I, <laughs> Lisa comes to bed a bit later. I'm still awake and she opens the curtains and it's just a sheet of white in front of me. Already? It was, wow. It was really, really, really heavy. <laughs> oh, like white as a blizzard kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, wow. really heavy. And then uh, I woke up in the morning and I got dressed and I went out and I cleared the car. And I sat in the car and I was like, right, okay, am I going to get the car up the hill? And then the phone buzzed and went, no work today. And I went, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, don't even have, have to try. try. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that saves a potential very expensive accident. Yes, very much so. So, and then today was the mm. same. I woke up this morning, I got ready for work, jumped in the car after de icing it, got all the way up the hill and around the corner. And then, I got the a and, then, and then I got a message saying, No work today. And I went, Okay. No. <laughs> Turned around and came home. <laughs> and you went really fast back down the hill and slid into the box. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I was like super, super slow. <laughs> Creeping down. Maybe less than an inch of snow in Hertfordshire. Mm. Okay. a bit iffy about the cycling in the ice oh gosh I, I've done that I've done oh. that too yeah I I did a bit when I was in Durham and I only, I only fell over once but yeah not not again it's not fun yeah it's been it's been great so if you've got any cool snowy pictures please put them in discord mm. I think I have to create a winter folder at this rate autumn folders out out come and gone leaves are all gone Strain with the snow now. Although, Pookie did put a very cool picture in today into the autumn folder. So. Very lovely with the colourful leaves. All the leaves on the ground, it was ace. Mm. Still places having autumn. There we go. Cool. How has your week been, though, other than fighting the internet and trying to make it work? Yeah, apart from that, not too bad. Um, i trying to what I've done this week. I got out, got out a few times, which was nice. Um, it's nice to go over because I was planning two weeks ago to go out on a mushroom walk, and then I went on a nice mushroom walk. I was excited to talk about all about the mushrooms I found, and then my internet died last week, so I couldn't join all that stuff. So I'm excited to talk about my mushrooms that I did find. Excellent. Barnacle fun. says my phone is rammed and refusing to let me post pics. That's not good, Barnacle. No. Because then you have to choose which ones to delete, and they're all so nice, and you can't choose any yeah. to delete. Oh. A little bit of snow, says Pookie. Nice. 
snow's great. I'm not going out. Snow. It's good. I think one of my favorite things about the snow, well, there's many things, but one of the things which I never appreciate is just how quiet it is when there's like a blanket of snow. You're like, whoa, it's so quiet. I always how, forget how quiet it is. How bright the world becomes. Even pitch yeah. blackness and there's snow on the ground and you can see perfectly like it's... Really contrasty like and everything. Dusk or dawn, just as the sun's about to rise or it's just set. It's the, it's that... It's so... Honestly, I couldn't believe how light it was outside it, it, in pitch blackness. It was amazing. Mm. Major file transfer. Oh, no. It always takes way longer than you think so oh yeah I'll just maybe like a few minutes maybe an hour at most or something and then you just put in hours of work and it's like cool you got rid of like one percent of your storage and then it just comes up again the next day it's very frustrating that's annoying thing with trying to take photos and you have so many nice photos and just know to store them but it's nice to see that lots of people have got snow kind of around the place around the UK and across the channel as well, so. Yeah. It's been nice. Great. Brilliant. Pretty okay, cool. so shall we move on to our first segment? We shall. Shall we do news first? We're mixing Actually, it up. Change it up. Do something slightly different. Whoa. See what the, fi what the five is, how it goes. What the, f what the five is, yeah. Cool. Okay, so let's let, let's start off with some news then. So I'm going to go first, and I'm going to start off with a new experiment challenges long-held theories on how migratory birds navigate by Bangor University. Mm -hmm. There we go. Exciting. How, how cool does that sound? Snow is slippery, though. My health makes me walk like a drunk person, so I don't feel good walking through it. Oh, <laughs> no, Pookie. Oh. That's not good. So here we go. This is from Rare Bird Alerts. Okay, migratory birds are known for their ability to traverse thousands of kilometers to reach their breeding or wintering grounds. Least research by Bangor University found that these birds, in this case Eurasian reed warblers, uh, use only the Earth's magnetic inclination and, and declination to determine their position and direction. The findings are published in the Journal Proceedings of the Royal Society uh, for Biological Sciences. This challenges the long-held belief that all components of the Earth's magnetic field, especially total intensity, are essential for accurate navigation. Scientists have long believed that these birds use a map and compass system. They first determine their location using a map and then use a compass to orient themselves in the correct direction. However, the exact nature of this map has been the subject of ongoing debate. In a carefully designed experiment, warblers were exposed to artificially altered magnetic inclinations and declination values, simulating a displacement to a different geographic location while keeping the total magnetic intensity unchanged. Despite this virtual displacement, the birds adjusted their migratory routes as if they were in the new location, demonstrating a comp compensatory behaviour. This response suggests that birds can e extract both positional and directional information from magnetic cues, even when other components of the Earth's magnetic field, such as total, in inten total intensity, remain unchanged. The research provided strong evidence that migratory birds rely on inclination and declination to determine their location, even when these cues conflict with other magnetic field components. What's interesting is that these findings revealed that the birds don't necessarily need all components of the Earth's magnetic field to determine their position, says Professor Richard Holland, who specialises in animal behaviour and led the study. They can rely solely on inclination and declination, which are also used in compass orientation to extract their location. The study challenges previous assumptions that all components of the Earth's magnetic field, particularly total intensity, are necessary for accurate navigation. It remains to be seen whether birds use the total intensity of the Earth's magnetic field for navigation in other contexts. But what we've shown is that these two components, magnetic inclination and declination, are enough to provide positional information, explained Richard. This discovery advances the understanding of avian navigation and supports the theory that birds possess a complex and flexible internal navigation system. This mechanism allows them to adjust for changes in their environment, even when encountering conditions they've never experienced before. 
The findings open new avenues for research into animal navigation and may hold implications for broader biological studies, including how animals interact and interpret their environment. What a cool study. It was amazing. When I found this and read this article, I was blown away. I think that's brilliant. Mm. As Nathan says, go banger. Yes, indeed. Animal magnetism. Uh, they have a better GPS. They do have a better GPS. Yeah, it's just amazing. Like migration, just the whole that part of things. And then just being able to sense magnetic, electric fields, everything, and just using it together. It's, it's just crazy. I remember there being like the studies of like robins having like quantum particles and like all these different molecules and proteins, which can be affected differently depending on like their orientation in a magnetic field. So they can sense things like in their eyes. It's, it's just ridiculous. Proper yeah. like sci-fi stuff. What, what surprises me so much is how accurate they are. Mm. Right, so for example, cuckoos return to the same site that they were born on every year. You know, that is just phenomenal. Ospreys yeah. always return to the same territory. Yeah, like loads of seabirds, like puffins, guillemots, yeah. razorbills, you things return to like the same area of like the cliff from when they want. It's how? Yeah, it's it's, it's and thistles just to put something. It's not just birds. So the olive ridley turtles do the same thing. Like they, yeah, they, re like, they they return to the same beach that they were born on. That's crazy. It's yeah. Just. Yeah, it's, honestly, it's just phenomenal. Oh. And, and, and when you consider how far some of these birds travel, or so, like sea turtles, how mm. far do sea turtles travel? And like they're not going to come back every single year. So they're born, they hatch, and then like they make it down to the water, and then out they go. And I think it's like 10, 15 years. I'm just guessing really? that number, but I'm going to estimate about 10, 15 years for a sea turtle to become like ready to start mate to start breeding and then those females return wow so how far have they traveled when they're out in the seas and oceans to then find that tiny little island again hmm. yeah total times is barnacle <laughs> yeah it's just i'm actually crazy. i'm actually going to look up how old uh how long until a sea turtle a turtle let's be turtle becomes uh do, 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 do. yeah barnacle saying like i'd imagine the ocean is harder to visually navigate than the sky which would make sense yeah like your visibility is much less and all that stuff so i guess like judging distance and things like if you're a bird going on coastlines that that will help visually but that's crazy what age do turtles start mating there we go uh Maturity may range from as early as 7 to 13 years for leatherbacks, 11 to 16 years for both species of Ridleys, 20 to 25 years in hawkbills, 25 to 35 years for loggerheads, and 26 to 40 for green sea turtles. 40 years at most. That's insane. Because so, they yeah. must live like 150 years. Yeah, they must live a long time. That's crazy. Pooh says, I know salmon use the moon in navigation. What? Now that's cool. Barnacle, I get disorientation in storms, but I've not landed on holiday in France yet. That's a key word. Yeah, imagine travelling all the way through oceans to reach a beach only to realise humans have made it a place to dump their rubbish. Indeed, Thistle. That's very true. That's very, very true. All these, yeah, just everything that's in the world, sea, air, land, forest, field, farmland, everything. Just everything's changing so quickly. The number of animals that must have that reaction, traveling all the way across the world, and like, oh, you can't even do anything with this place, and it's just all ruined. That's very cool. I remember when I was in Skoma talking to some of the researchers there, looking at like Manx Shearwater migration and navigation going across like oceans and things and they use olfactory like maps and like waypoints which just sounds ridiculous like how do you have like a smelling map of the yeah. ocean like sure that changes and everything so 
that'd be really cool to learn more about. I just think it's all amazing, to be fair. Hmm. And the fact that we still know so little. Like the well, study saying, yes, we, we know they do use it. <laughs> mankind nowadays, if we, if the internet was switched off, which obviously you've lived with for the last week, mm. but uh, if, it, if it was turned off completely, mobile phones didn't work properly, I don't think mankind could find its way out of a cardboard box. No. No GPS. Yeah, no. GPS, yeah. I've Next got a friend I've got a friend who honestly, whenever he gets in the car, even he knows where he's going, will always plug his phone in, put the address in, and have that running. So you'll have Google running constantly. This you just never learn if you always get the information given to you. New David Attenborough series is really good to us, the snacks. Asia. Very good. I haven't, I haven't kept up with it. But I've really watched the first three episodes. So. Mm. Very, very Many good. Many good things I've heard. What I've enjoyed most about it as well is the you know, you know the bit at the end where they always do the behind the scenes section. Mm. Oh, so good, so good. There was one about uh, like the the yaks, or is it? goats or something that live on the the Mongolian plains and he's gone to record them and then like a wolf is suddenly there and they start That's following deep. this wolf it's like oh it's just brilliant wow <laughs> Pookie I can navigate without a phone but I'm a dinosaur <laughs> it means you're well, more skilled than a lot of people though <laughs> well Pookie there's good. There, honestly, there's going to be a lot of young people who are not able to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes I stand in a place I've used my spidey, and use my spidey senses to figure out which way I'm facing. I'm usually wrong. <laughs> yeah, some people have a really good internal sense of direction. Yeah. I can like spin around or like take my hands like, oh yeah, that is north or something like that. I You've kind like of got to do that when you go abroad now. Yeah, you know, like you can't like gone of the days of you having uh, free roaming because we left the EU, and uh, so so let's say you go to Rome now, which has got really tight, tiny streets to get to get through. You've you've got to guess where you're going, mm. and then you'll you'll find a way, or you buy yourself an actual map. And you follow like the olden days, like the olden days, yeah. So, so no longer have you got Google saying turn left, turn right. Mm. It's the UK. We don't know sun. Yeah, navigating on a blank, featureless grey sky. Me and a friend got lost in a golf course once. As soon as we found a forest clearing, we could navigate so much better. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you just follow the golf course backwards. <laughs> A big open field. Too many oh. flags, too many holes. Anyway, <laughs> go stand on a tee and it'll tell you what hole you're on, and then you can decide which way to go. And remember, there's only 18 holes on a golf course, max. So, That's if true. you're on like 10 or higher, you're kind of like, okay, I'm just going to follow the golf, the golf holes, and then you can find your way off. It was a cyclist and his dog we kept seeing. <laughs> <laughs> they were lost as well, apparently. Indeed. I was like, where is the exit to this place? That is a big thing, like navigation. I'm trying to understand why that was. Nightbot's being fussy. It is being fussy. Maybe it was in all caps. It's because it's all caps, yeah. It doesn't we were looking for days. We were looping for days, says Barnacle. My boss was like, chill. Yeah. <laughs> Got your caps. Cool. Right, shall we move on to the next news story? Yeah. Do you... Shall we go for I'll, 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 I'll... I'll, no, I'll go for mine because yours is a good news story. So we'll leave that one to next and then we can finish on some good news and then move on to our wildlife encounters. There we go. Hit us with the great news. 
Yeah, so the next one is UK birds continue alarming decline, report says, or report uh-huh. shows. So this is from Bird Guides. Uh, a new DEFRA report has revealed that the UK's birds continue to decline with habitat loss, pesticide use, climate breakdown and bird flu all to blame. Data released by the government on 12th of November shows that all bird species have faced population decline during the past five years. According to the report, the UK bird species have declined in number by 2% in, in the five years since 2018, including by 7% in England. Farmland species suffering. Unsurprisingly, farmland birds are faring the worst, with severe long-term declines, uh, some 61% since 1970, and 9% between 2018 and 2023, among the more dramatic drop-offs in the last five years, include European turtle dove, down 54%, and tree sparrow, which has decreased by 35% in England and 25% across the UK as a whole. The decline in the number of farmland birds wow. is largely due to habitat loss, with fewer hedgerows, trees and other vegetation for them to nest in. The use of pesticides and fertilisers have also reduced the populations of insects available for the birds to eat. Some farmers have changed their farming practices and have not- started to see anecdotal improvements in turtle dove numbers. Woodland birds are also slipping away, with a 10% decrease during the last five years. Extinctions on the horizon. Experts have warned that some birds uh, could become extinct if these trends continue. So these was it the slim build, uh, curlew. slender bird curlew has just been classified as extinct this week. Mm. Although I don't think that's a UK bird, is it? Is it a UK bird? I, th- I think it was like a vagrant. I think, I think uh, it was the last one in the eighties or something. Yeah. Catherine Brown, Director of Climate Change and Evidence at the Wildlife Trusts, said the decline of the wild birds across the UK is tragic. These latest figures are particularly alarming given the downward trend across all bird species in recent years. Habitat loss, pop- pollution and climate change are all factors that have contributed to these worrying declines. The UK government must take action to restore at least 30% of UK land b- for nature by 2030, which was which was the last government's uh, mandate I had that in the last government's mandate Yeah. Uh, to give birds like hawfinch and common nightingale a fighting chance without con- uh, concerted action to restore nature at scale there is a significant risk that many bird species could be reclassified for endanger- uh, from endangered to extinct in Britain mixed results the figures could be far worse than shown as they do not take into account the loss of seabirds from bird flu, which ripped through populations from 2022. Professor Richard Gregory, head of species monitoring at RSPB Centre for Conservation Science, commented, Results are mixed, but what is most striking is, the, is that recent trends are predominantly downwards, a pattern most present, pronounced in England and nearly all groups of birds. That's a real worry given ambitions to halt and reverse species trends. Now more than ever, we need positive action at greater scale to help our birds and to halt and reverse losses. And remember uh, what I said there that was in the last government's mandate. The last government's mandate was set in 2018. Okay, so there has been a 7% decline in England, 2% over the whole UK in bird population since the uh, mandates said that they would increase uh, like nature-friendly areas to 30% of, of the uh, land mass of the UK. Not a good sign. So that shows that they haven't done anything, or what they have done hasn't been either enough or worked. Yeah. So there we go. But there are positives. So this year... Uh, eel farm uh, eel fishing in uh, certain waters around the UK has been banned Mm. so that will help seabird populations although the EU court is trying to uh, fight that uh, and trying to get that changed because obviously there's a lot of uh, Fishermen from the from mainland Europe who will come come to our waters and fish fish those uh, those sand deals. Uh, I don't remember seeing the Chancellor mention environment in her budget speech. She did not thistle. Uh, 
so yeah, so there has been positives done, mm. but just not enough. Just not enough. Yeah, nowhere near enough for the scale of the problem. Yeah. Unsurprisingly. But there we go. But yeah, it's it's terrifying. Seven percent in in England is yeah. just crazy. Absolutely crazy. Yeah, just the number of figures and facts just getting thrown at everyone saying, please do something. Yeah. You're in such a dire situation. And just nothing, nothing's happening. Nothing at all. But anyway, some good news. Give us some good news, Nick. Good news. Don't worry, everyone. It's not all sad news. Um, yes, this was a nice story I found. Uh, I think it was about an hour or so ago, uh, that came out this morning on the BBC, saying chip factory waste could regenerate salt marshes. So there goes a nice good story for us. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't worry. It's a, it's a really fun story. Um, so, some of the waste produced whilst making crisps and chips is helping to protect and regenerate vulnerable salt marshes. Conservationists are using grids made from potato starch along with ropes and willow uh, to boost plants suited to living in salt marshes. The UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology said 85% of England's salt marshes has been lost since 1860. It's a huge number. Uh, Lancashire's can be found at uh, Hestbank, Bolton of Sands and Jenny Browns Point. Salt marshes, as well as helping to prevent flooding nearby, provide unique habitats for birds, fish and some rare plants. The Our Future Coast project is led by Weir Council and managed by Lancashire City Council with assistance from the environmental group, the Morecambe Bay Partnership. Joseph Earl of the Morecambe Bay Partnership said that the new grids essentially try to trap sediment and encourage growth. He said the grids were environmentally friendly since the crucial thing is that they are biodegradable over a long period of time. Mr. Earl said salt marshes help to absorb wave energy. Uh, they help to reduce the risk of flooding and storms so the bigger picture is to try and restore the marsh and allow the safety net to re-establish. The grids manufactured in the Netherlands by BESE have been used successfully in Australia and the United States. Lancaster Council, uh, City Council project manager Eleanor Brown said success in the short term is that the BESE grids end up being covered in sediment, at which point they will biodegrade. That will be enough for colonizing plants to take hold and start to grow. Ooh. So there you go. A short but Nice uplifting fact. That's very uh, cool. Yeah. Potato grids. Potato grids. It's ama it's amazing how we find these things. Hmm. And realise that they can actually do something positive. Yeah, I wonder which way around was it like the factory or the business who's saying, ah, we could use that or we could send them that and help someone else. So I think what happens is the chip factories uh, have this waste product mm. and they're obviously very much trying to find a way to, for that waste product to be used now instead of just chucking it away. Yeah. Because number one, they can sell it, which makes them more money. So they're making money off of their waste. Mm. And number two, it makes, th it makes them look good in the in the eyes of uh, conservationists, environmentalists, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So what's probably happened is somebody's realised that you can use that to do what's been done and then they've started using it, <laughs> basically started buying it out uh, from these factories and, and using it. Mm. And that's... Wow, that's cool. I need to make a petition to Keir starting to help with the wildlife. A neighbour used chip oil to fuel their car <laughs> El Rato got excited and ate through her fuel tank. <laughs> oh, that must have—it must have smelled like a chippy though, like driving down the street. I remember seeing that on uh, Tomorrow's World. If anybody's old enough to remember Tomorrow's World, it was a BBC program, long, long it. time ago, mm. long, long time ago, before my time. Yes, very much so. Was it before my time? <laughs> Some of the stuff that was on Tomorrow's World was exceptional. Mm. 
It worked for a while. Definitely it was a chippy wolf which lived in the room. Yeah, I can imagine if it's not really good for us. The rats were like, whoa, drive by buffet. <laughs> drive by buffet, yeah. Amazing. That's cool. I'm trying to know what section we could do next now. What to change it up? Yeah. I guess you do encounters and then. Well, I think we I just like... go to wildlife encounters. Yeah. Let's do wildlife encounters. Do you want to go first? Okay, I'll go first. I'm going to start off with an Andy pick. Oh. You know, it's okay. a good We've got an Andy pick. I'm starting off with an Andy pick, and you've got to guess what it is. So it's the one that starts AP, please. <laughs> Sounds like Andy so it's, pick. A, it's Andy pick. <laughs> there it uh, is. It's a tree. <laughs> Going then, can, number one, can you see the bird? And number two, <laughs> do you Bunkles, know what type of bird it is? Barnacle's reaction, not happy. Brown sticks. Brown? <laughs> yes, that's all. It is brown sticks. I have a, I have a guess. Well, you have a, you have a guess. Go on then. At least I can tell it's a bird, and <laughs> I can tell it's of the thrush family. Okay, so I can just about see some of that like mottled belly. So I'm thinking red wings. Could you okay. see you're going to go so looking out for red wings? So we've got red wings. Well, 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 like Nathan Macro has said for red thrush. Wings. Yeah. <laughs> you're going song thrush barnacle. Okay. <laughs> barnacle says it looks identifiable. Like <laughs> that's a surprise <laughs> for these anti. <laughs> Finally, it's identifiable. <laughs> it's an anti pick, which is identifiable. Or does that make it an Andy pick though? If you actually identify it, <laughs> <laughs> Andy pick plus plus or something. Like that. Right, so you are all correct. It is a thrush. Yay! And it well, is a red wing. So I saw quite a lot of red wings, but they were so they're moving around so much. Uh, this is honestly the best view I got of one to get my camera on. The one that decides to say it was perfectly behind some twigs as well. Yeah. So perfect. It's great. I went to a new nature reserve for me, uh, which is mm -hmm. called Skylark, which is uh, oh, not that far away. Uh, it's th it's in it's on the south east side of Nottingham, on the, just off the A fifty two, and mm -hmm. uh, never been there before. And I was really impressed. Like I got there, and the car park's tiny, and then I started walking in, and it looked like a bit of a dump. Like there was. Like shipping cargo containers drop down and oh wow, that kind of stuff in locations. And I was like, oh my god, what on earth have I walked into? Then you get around the corner and it just suddenly becomes like there's just this open area. And I saw three green woodpeckers. Whoa, three of them all like I couldn't get a picture of them again. My camera wasn't playing ball, oh, but no. uh, I saw three green woodpeckers, a great spot of woodpecker, it was immense. Wow. Uh, and then I finally got to the hide and I started seeing some great stuff. So the next image we will show is... Oh, let's go for the J. Another J. You're right, Thistle. We should all go to Frampton <laughs> Marshes. Completely. 100%. Did someone there's, pay you to say this? Thistle? There's, there's no bird or Chris here to big it up, though. <laughs> someone has to do the, the weekly bump up for Frampton Marshes. Oh, Nathan's asking if you got around oh, to see the Avocet. I didn't get around to going down to try and see the Avocet. Nathan told me there is a, a, a J. Thistle, yeah, I'll put a <laughs> J at Skylark, it was called. Is it another anti pig? No, it's not. You can actually <laughs> tell that it's a J. No sticks in front of it, we promise. It's behind the red wings. It's behind there the it is. See, oh, you can tell go. it's a J. It's on the stick. It's it's kindly perched in view. Just just got an angle through to see it. I do love a J. I think they're great birds. Such I also love how they fly. Mm. You, can, you can tell it's a J by how it flies. The way its wings open and close and it, it moves up and down, up and down, up and down. It's just brilliant. I love the blue feathers as well. It feels like, oh, like a 
go faster strike or you have like a little like yeah, boy a racer car such a yeah. glorious bird really nice absolutely glorious bird. like most woodpeckers you're right Pookie it is especially green woodpeckers they do that because their wings go in and then they drop and the wings come out again and they flutter and they go up and then the wings <laughs> pop in again it's like can you do a demo for us I have not seen a J in flight no I can't burn a call I'm, 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 I'm not that good yet, I'm so. not that good I'm afraid one day, though, one day. Yet. You, you recognise them for their white bum. Ah, white oh. bum. We, we, we need to get to affiliate so we can start. you guys can start generating points and then we'll get impressions put back on. Exactly, that's the motivation. Go out, get your yeah. friends, come to come follow, and then yeah. you can come get your bird impressions. Indeed. And they, then... don't even have to, they don't even have to watch, they just need to follow. <laughs> you can invite them to watch those. Well. They're very fun to hang out with. Yes. Where else have you seen Andy pick? Yeah, just 30 of them, Thistle, you're right. Exactly. 100% just 13 of them. If everyone here had a friend, or even two friends, would come along. Bam, just like that. G impression is easy, just scream. (laughs) (laughs) Now, now actually, (laughs) Gs are well known for uh, mimicking other birds. Mm. So buzzards... For example, sometimes you hear a buzzard call and there's no buzzard around because it's a jay pretending to be a buzzard. Now we're just asking for someone to like redeem the bird impression of a jay pretending to be a buzzard. <laughs> a jay pretending to be a buzzard. <laughs> cool. Right, next, uh, let's go for the little egret, please. It's a great impression, Barnacle. <laughs> Arg, I'm a G. Yeah. <laughs> it was the tree said Barnacle. Because I guess the previous photo with the J. If you look closely, you can see that this mm. uh, little egret, I'm pretty sure, has a fish. Is it a fish or a feather? I'd say a fish. If it's a feather, oh. it can't taste very good, so I don't know why I would go I for it. I think it's a feather. Um, yeah. I think it's or a feather. a very fluffy fish. Or a very fluffy fish. Or like the skeleton of a fish. Like it was like, like good fish. Nick, Don't. I do keep telling Saffron, the one who was with oh, me yeah. at Gwaith for the Nightjar walk, to watch, but she hasn't got round oh. to it yet. Oh. One day, one day. It looks like a feather to me on Mobiles' barnacle bomb. Yeah, I, th- I think it's a feather as well. Not a fluffy fish. But still, yeah, there a little egret. feathers around as well. I do, I do love a good little egret. I think they're fantastic little birds. I say little, they are very big in comparison mm. to most birds around. For trout. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's cool. Right, next we'll go for the great white egret. Oh, he's going through all the egrets now. This is my first decent picture of a great white egret as well, actually. Oh, it is pretty great. It looks like a pencil. I know. Like what's over there? Mm-hmm. He's not even had like a full extension. There's still like a kink yeah. in the neck. Just glorious birds. Good again. Animation. This is the first egret I ever saw. Was a great white egret. Really, that's cool. Hmm. Yeah, kink in the neck again. Yeah, I do love them. And then that's let's cool. move. Let's move on to a, a non-native species, the Egyptian geese. Yeah. I like buying <laughs> them. I just thought it was a stick. <laughs> Pretty birds. First time I ever saw these were in St. James's Park in uh, London. Mm. And I was like, what on earth are they? They look evil. <laughs> they are far too... Uh, Fancy looking. And I've, they've grown on me. Yeah. You had the same thought, Thistle. Yeah. See? They're evil. I wouldn't say they looked evil to me. I feel like they just looked far too fancy to be native. Like, surely you're not from around here. Far too colourful and patterny. <laughs> Where goes, I like the goal on the far left staring you down. <laughs> Why are you taking a picture of me? Yeah, basically. <laughs> I didn't I want a picture of that- me. There are more ducks and geese. Ooh, so that's cool to know. Oh, wow. 
Is there an evasive into the geese family as well? Yeah. Definitely. Okay, what if an option? Oh, oh, oh. So one of my favourite uh, mm. water birds, the golden eye. Oh, glorious one. Saw them there too and also thought the same. The males uh, were going mental attacking everything though. <laughs> Beautiful golden eye. Oh, like that kind of, like a shag there with like slight emeraldy tinge. Yeah, on the it's just it, black head. Just the crest Lovely. that they have as well. It's just, oh, brilliant little birds. I'll say little, they're actually quite big, but in comparison to most other ducks. Diver with glasses in Dutch. Ooh. Oh, that's fun. I feel like we need a quiz of like Dutch. Dutch names translated, like literally translated to English. But then people look like Pingu's dad. (laughs) (laughs) Cool. Right. Uh, We're going on to a couple of first winter birds now. So this is them moving into the first winter. So uh, can we go for the cormorant, please? It's the head shapes of the barnacle. So there's a cormorant moving into its first winter. She's a lapwing in the back in the bottom left as well. Lovely lapwing. Looks almost like a, a bit like a buzzard almost. It does, doesn't it? It it it, it kind of looks like a bird of prey sat on the yeah. post, but yeah, it's definitely a cormorant. First winter cormorant. That's lovely. Also staring directly at you. And then one that caught me by surprise. This is my last uh, wildlife encounter for this week. Because I actually managed to get out and do some wildlife spotting, which was great. That's always so nice. It was so nice. Uh, It's a great uh, crested grebe. And this is the first winter for the one of them, too. Oh, lovely. And I just love the pattern on the head for this one. Hmm. The, like messy detached lines. Yeah, just brilliant. Like going down the back, it's gorgeous. Zebra never, That's a never nice seen a great crested grebe like, this young before. I've seen chicks, but I've never seen them mm. like the, like okay, they've now left the nest and that's it. They're they're independent. Never seen one, and I'm like, mm. wow, okay, that is that is very cool. So, <laughs> yeah, and this is all that's a skylark. It says Grebera, Nice we find you. You're right, Barkle. I was, I was very happy. It's a good resort, by the looks of things. Absolutely fantastic resort. One that I will most definitely go back to, just to try and see the red wings again. I basically walked the entire route trying to spot red wings and saw them in the last corner, and then I saw them back at the car again. But again, as always, they just fly off and you don't get pictures of them. So, no. Oh. One day, one day I'll get a picture of it. Next stream. But there we go. So yeah, so I've got a couple images left, but I'm going to keep them for my uh, wildlife focus. I have them in the garden. Oh. Oh. Barnacle, stop it. <laughs> I have one watching the stream right now with me. Piggy says, I noticed all UK wow. uh, nature reserve have hides. Kind of rare to see here. It's very dependent on where you go, Pookie. Uh yeah. So the ones that I normally frequent don't have heights. So Sherwood Forest doesn't have any. Uh, Budbay doesn't have any. Uh, Langford Lowfields doesn't have any. It's got viewpoints, but it doesn't have heights. Uh, and then Sherwood and Budbay don't have any because like, there's no specific places where you would go to see things. Hmm. But then some that I have been to recently. So Frampton does. Frampton Marshes does. Uh, Cly, which I went to last year, I definitely did. I had three fantastic hides, actually. Hmm. All in the middle of the marshes, all pointing different directions right next to each other. So depending hmm. on you want, what you wanted to look at, depending on which one you went to, one, two, or three, just brilliant. So if you get a chance, go to Cly Nature Reserve. I think with me, only the larger ones have hides. 
and again what you're saying with with places to look for certain birds and things in the water uh, but yeah, i think i can you think of two around me but north Wales isn't exactly the most busy place yeah which ones did i go to in wales when i was there in pembrokeshire uh One of them definitely had hides. I can't, don't think the other one did. So I think it was 50 50 there. I couldn't even tell you what their names were now. But uh, yeah. Clyde, Snetcham, and Titchwell, Norfolk is a good place to move to. You're right, Thistle. I'd love to move to that area. Not bad. I, I didn't do Snetcham, I did Titchwell. Uh, Hitchville was amazing last year. There we go. Cool. Right, so they're mine. When you go, Nick. Oh, you're mine. I want um, a shot moth. Yeah. G- give me a shot moth. Oh no, I don't have a shot moth for this oh, week. Oh, no shot moth. I haven't seen. I haven't seen one for the last two weeks. So since I last shown on the stream, I've been looking out for them. But it has got a lot colder over within the last week or so. But never despair. Always keep your eye out for shot moths. They're always out there. Um, but yeah, I mentioned the last time I was on the stream, I was going to go look for some mushrooms. Uh, I was a bit late in wax cap season um, and general mushroom season. It was getting a bit over, but I still went out for a nice walk and found some lovely things. Uh, so I'll start with, I'll go for a crimson wax cap. Moth rooms. Yes, moth, yes, combine the two. A moth, oh, a mushroom moth, like a, a lovely mushroom, and then just a little moth sitting on top. That'd be nice. Um, one day. Uh, but yeah, this is a nice crimson wax cap. Um, most of the mushrooms where I was going had all been ravaged by slugs or the public, whichever one's more vicious. Um, <laughs> so most of them were over and just scattered across the place. But there's still a few lovely ones. Um, this was the most intact crimson wax cap which I could find. It's always a lovely one. Um, I'm fairly certain it's a crimson wax cap, but never too sure. Um, go on to a yellow field cap next. Uh, this is always a really nice one. It's almost kind of, I don't know how to describe it. It's a very distinct um, like cut cap on it, like very closed, almost egg like not quite right not quite the right shape it hasn't it's hasn't it opened yet to release its spores mm. so it's quite young this one bean sprout vibes yes barnacle bomb that's good yeah bean sprout. it does give bean sprout power. there you go so there's the bean sprout uh, i'll go on i'll do my wood below it next um this is a lovely one where when they're young the kind of gills and the underside are really nice, kind of tinged, very nice pinky kind of hue, kind of purpley pink. Oh, that's um, so nice. This one had been knocked in half by whatever. Um, so I found it like this, but just, yeah, just seeing that really lovely tint of purpley violet lilac color. Oh, that was just really lovely. A really nice hue. So that's lovely. Uh, I've gone to my sycamore gall mites, because this is a nice one. Um, walking through a nice woodland, um, all the leaves on the ground, and then noticed these lovely little red kind of pimples uh, on this dead uh, sycamore, sycamore leaf. I uh, had a look at what, what they were, and I think they're sycamore ghoul mites. Uh, so ghouls, the kind of abnormality growths caused on plants or fungi uh, from parasites or other or kind of bugs and things um, having laid their young or eggs or something like that. And the plant usually has some type of reaction or growth from the chemicals uh, in the parasite. I think with what Fistlax is saying, if it's too late, I think because it's on dead leaf, I don't know if these look particularly fresh um, or old for gourmet 
cases, if you can call them that. Um, so I've no idea how long this one's been around for. Um, but one of the dead leaves are at least a few weeks. Um, also, it's a really lovely color, a really nice deep red on the nice kind of old brown looking leaf. Sounds really nice find. It says festive. they look festive, yeah. And talking about good. things being too late, it's I was in a late. garden last week and there was a cosmos in full flower and they are normally a summer autumn flowering plant. Wow. In middle of November, glorious full cosmos and full and full bloom. It was just stunning. Now, I don't expect I'm going there back into that garden tomorrow. I doubt it's going to be in full bloom now. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> It, things are know. things are a lot later this year, still flowering, still mm. happening, than we've seen in previous years because it's been so mild. So, yeah, I'm trying to think. I've seen like wood avens, devil's bit scabious, these types of buttercups all out yeah. in the last week or so. So yeah, they have been. Yeah, it's flying really late. Mm. Yeah, but I was saying. It's been very mild here until yesterday. Yeah, same barnacle here. And we had all the mm. snow. <laughs> Quick snap. Um, I'll finish with my frost bonnet. Um, my other one's my spotlight. Um, but yes, this is a really nice find I stumbled upon. Um, so I was going out to look for a nice fungi, and I came across a really nice one, which would be my spotlight. Oh, uh, and then whilst that. I was taking a photo of it, um, I almost knelt and I was like, oh my god, there's a tiny little a little mushroom. So for scale, my like the width of my forefinger, forefinger index finger, that's the word. Um, that would fill about 90% of the vertical width of the frame. So it's only four millimeters tall or so. Um, so it's a teeny tiny little frost bonnet. It's very delicate looking. Mm. Yeah, it's a bit hard to see, Stunning. but the stem's actually translucent, like transparent, translucent. Um, yes, background is moss. Uh, for select, this is on a nice large dead log covered in moss, which are looking at this other fungus. And then it's happened across a few of these tiny little frost bonnets coming up. I just love the detail in them, like that kind of umbrella, like beach umbrella with the alternating, like bright dark, bright dark on the top bit you kind of see the, like the ribs coming off um top just yeah, it's a really lovely delicate lovely color that was really nice um, but yeah that's been i think from the last week or so end of the mushroom or well, main mushroom period there's still plenty out there mm. i need jellyfish vibe because the translucency yes. yeah what does so you need to Photoshop it now into a jellyfish. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Awesome. That looks fantastic. What a find. What a find. Mm, accidental that. wildlife finds always. Accidental <laughs> wildlife finds. Oh, here we go. So this is Pookie's image that I was talking about earlier. This is from today. Pookie, thank you so much for putting this on. Oh, I love the colours. Just stunning image. It's just such like a you great variety. Yeah, like you said, the background of snow on it as well is lovely. Oop, Kestrel. Mm. I do believe this is Barnacle Bums. Lovely. Lovely photo. Not quite an Andy Pick. You did try, but it's not quite an Andy Pick. <laughs> you can tell what it is. Try standing behind a tree this time. Now, this is one of Nathan's. Hmm. I couldn't tell you what this is. I know you did write it in Discord, but... Uh... Let's see if I can quickly get it up. That one is Brown Trout. Brown Trout. I love the red dots From along its flank. Yeah, Brown Trout. Yeah. Thank you. Really exciting to see all your kick sampling and just general antics and seeing like rock falling and stuff. It's it's really cool all the photos and finds. Mm. 
Looks orangey to me, says this. <laughs> Ooh, this is one of Pookie's as well. This is the uh, the way the sun's going through the clouds and you get the mm. the rainbow colours on its right-hand side. I've been seeing this quite a lot recently, actually. Mm, it'd be from the cloud containing lots of ice crystals. So being a lot ah. colder this time of year, a lot more of the clouds is around these parts of the world containing ice crystals, um, which refract... Uh, the light in a way which you, the rainbow is much like tighter to the sun. Kind of things you get these like nice art, like rings around the sun or the moon sometimes. A nice rainbow. Yeah. Oh, there is a name for this, the Salax, but I cannot remember right now. So I can quickly look it up. Mm. Cloud iridescence, that's probably the closest one. Oh, I do believe this is another one of Nathan's. I think that one's the Hairy Wee Beastie. That is that is correct, Barnacle Bomb. That's what it is. It's a hairy wee beastie. That's good and hairy. I think that's golden ring. Yeah, golden ring dragonfly larvae. <laughs> Should have brought it into our Halloween quiz a few weeks ago. We were the best buds with the tongue parasite. No! Don't remind me Sorry. about the tongue parasite. <laughs> Ooh, is that a sea slug? I think that one is. That's from the rock pool. That's the angular sea slug. Again, from Nathan. I agree with you, Barnacle Bomb. I think that's cute too. That's very cute. Stuff with blue. Hmm. That's like you. And then a citrine nude branch. That one there. Again from Nathan. Thank you, Ben. It's actually quite difficult to see that one because it's kind of the. Is very similar colour to the background rock that it's mm. sat on. That's a great spot, Nathan. Yeah, you can imagine just completely disappearing into yeah. whatever it's on, like gravel or anything, just disappear. How big is that? That's true. My guess would be like centimeter just over yeah centimeter I, don't, I don't think that's big at all how big was this nathan give small vibes you can't flash like that red wing <laughs> <laughs> looks just like a bit of that tree <laughs> yeah nathan want more andy pics your photos are too good it was about seven millimeters wow Seven meters, that's crazy. What the hell did you see that? Right. This one is Orange Stripe Stone Fight Lava, which is endemic to the UK. Which is really cool. I love like the jagged look on the back and wow. That one Polycentricus Flavimaculatus larvae. That's a fun Latin name. I I, I like some of that one. Um, type of caddisfly. Some of the colours are just phenomenal. Like this one, that beautiful grey, bluish grey stripe down its back. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh. I think that one would be Pudilis marginata larvae, if I've gone through the list correctly. I apologize if I have not. That is belly. That's his, That's belly. his belly, not his back. Whoa. Oh, Interesting. Little belly rub. Which was that? That one's from the kick. Okay, like the rock pool then. Uh, 
Six. I think that's the Janeiro Maculosa. If I got that right. And then... So it's like a worm to me. Oh, the one but at the end a is a Cephalothrix. It's very cool. Mayfly infected with the nematode parasite. Whoa. <laughs> Forbidden noodles. This, I feel like this could also be a forbidden noodle. It's very spiky. No, that's a it's dwarf brittle star. Cephalothrix. That's a brittle star, yeah. Cephalothrix. Cool words. Pretty fun names. Worms. So cool. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. Please do keep them coming. As we see every week, we love seeing them. Hmm. It's just such a wholesome, nice thing to scroll on. Yeah. I, oh, makes me feel happy inside. It's lovely. <laughs> Super dinky brittle stuff. <laughs> Shall we go on to our species highlights? Yes, let's do it. Do you want to go first with your one? I will. I will. I'm going to apologize now. Barnacle Bomb, I did try and use that website you shared with me, but it wouldn't actually give me a pronunciation. So uh, we are, we're we're going to struggle today. Uh -oh. I might not even bother trying. I'll just oh. put it in chat. It's always fun. So today, at least you attempted. <laughs> Every week from now on, Barnacle, I, I assure you. So this week, we're, I'm going to talk about the shoveler. So I've got a male and a female image. Can we get the male up first, please? Yeah, so this familiar duck with its large spade-like bill is relatively scarce and localized breeder. Look at that. <laughs> it's showing off its leg. It's like or very it's like orange leg. Capsizing. <laughs> Winter numbers are swelled by the arrival of wintering birds from the far, far, from further east. The shoveler is a rather specialised feeder, as its broad bill might suggest feeding on zooplankton. One consequence, consequence of this is that shoveler tend to uh, favour more ephemeral water bodies, where potential competitors, e.g. fish, cannot survive. Wintering individuals include birds from the breeding populations that extend from eastern uh, Fenoscandia and the Baltic to western Russia though many of these uh, move further south into France and Spain, as do some individuals from our own breeding populations. Cool. Good little shoveler. Can I get the female image up as well, please? So you can see the difference here. So the male's obviously quite close. A beautiful dark green head, white breast, chestnut uh, stomach. And then you see the female. And like most birds in the UK... It is a little more, a little more drabber, you know, more brown, mottled. Uh, but that's mainly because it'll be sat on the uh, nest, so that it allows it to hide, uh, like blend into its lo to its its surroundings a little bit better. Hmm. So there we go. I love the patterning on the females. Yeah, they're like it's repetitive, but just. Slightly different each time. It's really lovely. So it is a UK list amber bird. Uh, believed to be around about eleven thousand pairs in the UK. Where are we? Uh, Barnacle says there. the male looks like a wee Christmas pudding, fruitcake based <laughs> icing, and a sprig of holly on the top. I really like that Christmas pudding duck. So number of broods one, and it's believed it's nine to eleven eggs per brood. Oh my god, that's a lot. That's a lot. Survival longevity. Okay, so we keep doing this competition each each oh, time. There you go. Okay, so maximum age from ringing. What do we think the maximum age from ringing is? So we call them Ooh. slop ducks. This is pookie. Slop. Oh, that's fun. Maximum age from ringing. I can't really picture or think about like ducks, like whereabouts they sit. Because we had 
was it oyster catcher? Was that twenty? Forty. It was forty-one. Was, was it forty-one years for an oyster catcher? Oh, we both went on fifteen years. So maximum's fifteen. Okay, okay. Mm, I'm thinking like low thirties. I mean, like mid thirties. Okay, mid thirties. Soon thirties. Spongebob said forty-two now. This is the answer to everything. Thistle <laughs> said 51. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stick quite well. I'm going to say like 35. We'll put 17. 17. We've got range. Yeah. 42 for Oyster Catcher, I meant. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah. That's like, thank you, Barnacle. Yeah. Lived a lot longer than we, than we all expected it to. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sticking with my like 35. Okay. That's so like a good mid ground. Anybody for any more? They are winter visitors to Chennai, India. Ooh, that's cool, Thistle. That's Didn't know that. Way. Wow. Is that from, like, going across the continent? It must be. Probably Actually, ones from Russia and stuff like that will pop down, won't, won't they? Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's the UK population. Hmm. There aren't any as well. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting to know. So they're well spread bird. Yeah. That's fantastic. So the maximum age from ringing. Okay, so understanding that the typical lifespan is about three years. Oh. The maximum age from ringing is 22 years, seven months, and 22, 24 days, set in 2009. Oh. Which is still a long time. Hmm. So I think Pookie probably closest there. Yeah, Pookie was closest for seventeen. Wow. So average or well, roughly three. Maybe did seven times longer. That's very cool. Absolutely brilliant. Right here we go. Here we go. Okay. So for in Dutch it's slobind, slobind, which is that the slop duck. Slop ducks, yeah. In Welsh it is Hueden Ladenbig. Or Leidenbig. Hueden Leidenbig. And here we go with the Gaelic. Okay, are we are we ready? Are we ready for the Gaelic? Prepare yourself, on. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, Barack, I'm saying it now, okay? <laughs> Cover your ears. Lakai Gub Lithin. Lakai Gub Lithin. Is my guess on that. Barack Obama says, ooh, is that a good ooh? <laughs> oh, followed by a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Probably gonna, not I'll, a good sign. I'm going to... Uh, Copy and paste it into chat. Here you go. I mean, it sounds right from what you said. Yeah, Hayub Lithane. Hayub What website is this? I'm curious to find all these translations. It's a BTO. Where's BTO? Oh. Yeah, the BTO, uh, British Trust for Ornithology website, bird facts pages. Thank you, BTO. I think it's a fantastic page. Mm, yeah, I, did, I, just, I just search a bird, and, the, and that is where I always go to. So and It's got lots of great information. Like So, for example, uh, seasonality. So, shovelers are most often seen in autumn and winter, though can be seen in the breeding season at suitable breeding sites. And then it's got a really good like uh, chart that shows you roughly how often they're seen depending on what time of year it is. So like during the summer months it is a lot lower. You go to the wiki language and change this switch to language. That's a good idea as well, Pookie. Oh, that's a brilliant idea. I wanna try that now. Yeah, biometrics. So this one doesn't have anything on the biometrics. But at the bottom there's codes and classifications. And uh, for more for information in another language, we're available. Click on the linked name, and it 
basically, so Spanish is cucara camón. Irish is sparlach. It's got Estonian, it's got Hungarian, it's got Norwegian, it's got Italian, it's got Slovak, Swedish, Polish, Slovenian, Icelandic. You know? That's great. Amazing. Really, really good. Really good. I'd call it a goblethane, a wide broad mouth. Yours is more descriptive, wild duck with the broad mouth, which gives a plural name. Ah, cool. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. So that's mine. That's the shoveler. Hmm. What would yours? What, what's yours this week? Mine. Goop. Uh, is a fungus. So I came across this on my walk uh, in the woodland, and it is the lovely candle snuff fungus, which I always love finding. I always love finding the ones which come like not just one, they kind of cover a log or a section or something, but read of them. So candle snuff fungus, or Xyleria hypo hypoxylon, uh, also known as the stag horn and carbon antlers has an erect simple or forked fruiting body with a downy stalk from one to six centimeters tall. It's a common fungus that grows in groups uh, on dead and rotting wood and can be found on stumps and branches of all sorts of trees at any time of year. It's black and hairy at the base of the stem and powdery white at the tip. The stem can become flattened and branched in a fork like an antler, hence the other name of stag's horn. This fungus has medicinal properties it's both antiviral and active against tumours. Although it is not poisonous, it is too small and tough to eat. The powdery substance seen on the upper branches in spring is made up of asexual spores. Sexual spores are produced later in the season, which gives the fungus two chances to reproduce. The genus name Xyleria comes from the Greek noun xylon, meaning wood, from the same source as the word xylem, which is the wood of the tree that transports water and nutrients from the roots up to the branches, twigs and leaves. The specific epithet uh, hypoxylon comes from hypo meaning beneath or less than and xylon meaning wood. So below or beneath wood. It's lovely. Mm. And then Very I was cool. just trying to look up using was it Pookie who changes the wiki yeah, Pookie changed the wiki page and switched the language because I couldn't find a, the uh, translation. And using that um, comes up with white horns in Welsh or Cairngwyn. So in Welsh, translates to white horn, which is nice. Cool. I, yeah, first of all, they read their bioluminescence, but it's not visible to human eyes. I think that's true as well. Um, but you need either uh, like a really like a pitch black room and long exposure. Or I think if you, which I wouldn't want to do, but if you like took up the like bark of the rotten wood to find like the hyphae underneath like the main mycelial structure um, then you can actually see it going a bit easier which is fun which i'd love to try but then i don't want to destroy where it's living um, antler yes, I, fungus yes oh that's a good one <clears throat> yeah barnacle would be really fun to go with the uv light into the woods just find these glowing fungi which would be really cool and all the yeah. mosses and things that look bioluminescent as well Mm. And all the molds and things like that on the on the barks, yeah, that'd be that'd be a cool thing to do. Be a lot of fun. Time to get one for the shore. Ooh. What kind of things are bioluminescent or grow glow glow you under UV? I'm like the shore, I imagine that's like rock pool things, like anemones. Do they grow under UV? I'm making that up. Everything. Everything. <laughs> wow. <laughs> No wonder you're tempted to get one. That sounds amazing. That's just amazing how there's that, that other world of using a different light source. Everything looks different. That's really cool. Crabs and enemies, fish, loads of stuff. That's really cool. I want to try that now. That's really fun. Right. What's that? We've got one more thing to do, don't we? 
Ho ho. You thought it was over, but I am back with another quiz. So bring out your thinking caps because we've got ourselves another quiz. Ooh, oh, please do, Barnacle. That'd be very cool to do. That'd be very cool. Oh, crabs, crab. hermit crabs, some snails and enemies, especially snake locks, fish, cephalopods, isopods, some sea slugs, sea spiders, and shrimp. Thank you, Nathan. Wow, it really is everything. It is. That's really cool. Told you, everything. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Barnacle. <laughs> well, um, but yeah, we have kind of a short quiz, but I guess we'll see how long it takes us. Um, so if you could bring up the beginning, it's in like a PDF, so we like scroll down, but we have a practice question to start. Um, is anyone familiar with the term dingbats for a type of quiz? I hadn't before I came across it on SCOMA. Um, okay, Bangkok says yes. So it can either be words or pictures, but they're like combined in a way or using a way to try and form a different word. Um, so can, and these are all UK wildlife. So like birds, mammals, insects, things like that. Um, so a collection of pictures will form the name of something with UK wildlife related. Um, so I know this one, I know this one already. Ah, okay. Can any, I ah, go peaky sounds like we got it. So this is this is the easy one. <laughs> ding, dingbats. Yes, Barack Obama. I I remember <laughs> that too. We used to call people dingbats. <laughs> ah. Dingbat. It's now I guess you can call it a compliment. <laughs> you call them like ding. I guess I don't know. It depends depends on the context that you mean it. Yeah. You're such a dingbat. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> you can take it as a compliment. I'm not meaning it as a compliment. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> Um, but yes, I call men this is barnacle. Actually, a Dutch thing. Mm -hmm. huh. cool. That's very cool. Um, so yeah, practice round. Pookie's got it. What do you think it was, Andy? Ding equals Dutch for thing. Okay, so Dutch oh, thing. Wow. Ding. Dingus, yeah. <laughs> Duchess. That's very cool. So much knowledge around here. So thing bat, <laughs> thing bat. Yeah. So it's hedgehog. Yeah. So you've got a picture of a hedge, picture of a pig, hedge and hog, which forms hedgehog. So I've got ten of these. Hopefully, you guys can work it out. I thought it'd be a bit of fun to finish off the stream this week. So yeah, we'll start with. I guess we go one or maybe like a few at a time, depending on how people. Happy to do. I know this next one. Hedgehogs. Oh, it's gone too far. Ah. Okay, we'll start with. Start with the top one. It's not working. There's no technical issues. It's all okay. There you go. So, based off of the first one, or practice round of a hedge and a pig forming hedgehog. What do we think question one is? So it's all UK wildlife, mammals, birds. Nathan Mack says kingfisher. Kingfisher. fisher of kings. Ah, uh -huh, but I call that. Yeah, I think people have got it. It's... Yeah, well, so it's I easy again. It's a kingfisher. That's a kingfisher. Well, Ted should be a kingfisher man. But uh, you take the man out, Kingfisher. All part of the game. He looks very satisfied at that fish. He does. <laughs> right, so we're stepping up a bit for question two. I realize some of these can be probably either see it instantly or you never get it at all. Um, but yeah, very below. What animal or plant or UK wildlife thing can this be? You know, quick music or something, like a theme tune or.
Mm, no one's coming in straight away. No. You got any ideas? A weevil. Okay. So Barnacle says weevil. Mm, close. Oh, Barnacle is a bit ooh. Is that an I know it ooh or confused to who knows? Weasel. Ah, Nathan's got it. We sell. Okay. I got the wee oh, part, on. but I couldn't figure out what the second bit went was, so. There's a sale going on. It's meant to be weasel. We cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking, Barnacle Bomb. We cabbage. How can that be? We cabbage. We cabbage isn't a thing. I have to Unless think outside in... the box with some Unless of these. You're in Scotland, where we means small. We have a wee cabbage. <laughs> cool. So We're the first one was Kingfisher. One. Second one is Weasel. Excellent. We sell. Yeah. So it's not necessarily like a literal one word, two word, one syllable, two yeah. syllable. It's like a story with pictures. Like this one can be quite hard, so if people aren't sure, I can, I could give some hints. Any ideas? <laughs> Thank you, Barnacle. It's very poetic in a way. It's like it's just it's like it's just walking up and going, ah! <laughs> Scottish, Scottish wild <laughs> wildcat. <laughs> yeah, so I, I came across these on SCOMA. We were doing some education work. Um, and we had like an event of people come like young birders come over and we had a quiz. Some of these I have taken from there because they were just, I thought they were really good. I have no idea with this one. People aren't too sure. It's a bird type of bird, breeding bird in the UK. It's a seabird. Breeding seabird in the UK. Oh, Bonneville the thinks they know it. So this one isn't like a literal one. It's a, a storytelling one. Think outside the box, if you will. Ah, you got a barnacle. It's kitty wake. Because the kitty's waking up. Okay, <laughs> I would never have got that. Well done, Barnacle, no. <laughs> for that one. Good job, Barnacle. I think you're on two. Is that two points for Barnacle now? We're not, but there's no points. Everyone's a winner there in the end. Well, we're going to the next one. So we're going down to the next page. Hopefully, it goes okay with the tech side. Ah, perfect. This one I'll accept two answers for because we had two. Oh, there's two it could be. This one image. One image. Again, like thinking outside the box, it's not just like train. Oh, Bank already has one in mind. Can you think of the other one, Barnacle? Those other people might be. Mm, 50, 50. That yes, is a train. I agree with you. That is a train. <laughs> Expand our minds. Think outside the box. What? It's a bird. Well, I'd say they're both birds, the two I can think of. What could you like relate to trains from the picture? Real verbs. <laughs> Real verbs. <laughs> mm. Oh no. Yeah, see, I'm really struggling with this. What sound might a train make? That might sound like a bird's name. 
Crystal Bird. No, not quite Steam Rail. I think someone's. I think these kind of things you either get it instantly or you don't. If I say one is chuff, like it seems like chuff, chuff, chuff going along. There we go. <laughs> Can't tell if Nathan's impressed or mad. Or... There you go, chuff. Yeah. There is another bird it could have been, which is, I'd say is also technically a correct answer if anyone can think of that. Guesses. The other one was puffin. Like okay, it's so yeah, puff. Yeah, because it's, pu it's puffing along. Yeah. yeah. I've never got either of them. Oh, maybe these are too hard. <laughs> <clears throat> never got we'll either go of the them. Next one. Hopefully, the next one is easier. Thomas the Tank Wheel, <laughs> but. Okay, I got this one. Okay, cool. Oh, I can't find the right level. It's either impossible or too easy. Vicky, say, Vicky <laughs> says easy. Barack <laughs> says, ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't right, found the right level. What do you think it is? Yeah, feel fair. Yeah. Cool. Well, everyone. We'll go to the next one. It's quite topical with the with the snowy clouds. So this one isn't a bird. That's more like more UK wildlife, but it's not a bird. Yeah, I thought snow bunting there for a second, Barnacle Bomb. Close. It's not just a little bit of snow. That's, that's a lot of snow. That's a whole, I guess, either two or four clouds, depending if it's a shadow or not. It's not just a light flurry of snow. It could be described as something else. Any ideas it's from anyone? Bunting. It's not a snow. The, the, the way you're saying it was blizzard, and I went, oh, buzzard, but it's not a bird. So. No. Ah, Pookie's got it. Lizard. It's a blizzard, but without a B, so it's a lizard. Ah. No B snowstorm. <laughs> no B snowstorm. <laughs> it's a lesser no B snowstorm. Well done, Pookie. On to question seven. See, this one's a specific species. Uh, oh, I'm, the, I'm the same with Pookie on this one as well. Ah, okay. First thought, port, but it's not a port. It starts with an H. Mm-hmm. One of two species we commonly get in the UK. Yeah. With this group of animals. Port. Port. <laughs> That's a port starting with an H. Yep. <laughs> Not a bird. Not a bird. That's correct. Oh, have you got a barnacle? Kept saying harbor stamp over and over. <laughs> there might be a harbor stamp out there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As soon as I got the second bit, Nathan, I got I changed ports to harbor, so it's harbor seal. Yeah. It's a port stamp. Did <laughs> you thought wax wing could make sense? The boats and the wings. Oh, that's true. Actually, that's another one. Kind of like a wax wing. Hmm. 
well done. I guess Nathan Tinder gets the point, but I think most people got that in the end. Yeah. Who owns the last? Who the last three? I think it's an easy one. Yeah, Barnacle's got it. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. I got I thought barley for a second, but it's not, it's wheat. Mm-hmm. I think everyone's got it. What have you got, Andy? Wheater. Mm-hmm. Wheat here. Wheat here. Yeah, wheat here. Wheat lobe. <laughs> wheat I don't lobe. know why when you when you wrote that I saw meatloaf barnacle bumps. <laughs> Sorry, it was Nathan that wrote it, not barnacle. I think they both put wheat lobe. Oh, they did. Yeah. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Oh, not the easy one. I feel like oh, I made them either. My favorite seabird. It's my favorite seabird. There we go. It's the clue. If people remember what my favorite seabird is, everyone say it all at once. All at once in chat. Blade paper. The paper. paper. That's, the one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. I do love a shape of paper. What is it, Andy? It's a razor bill. Razor bill. There we go. We're going to the last one, hopefully. Yeah, nice animation. Hopefully the last one's a bit harder. I think maybe those are far too easy or far too hard. I didn't get the right balance here. What do we think? It's the last one. Give it your ball. Like some of these were just unbelievably frustrating. And you either see them instantly or you don't. And we're on SCOMA like planning these and some people went through them and they had no idea. And I was like, oh yeah, I can get that one pretty easily. And then they, they couldn't get it for the rest of the time. And then I had some I just couldn't figure out at all. Ah, uh, Barnacle got it. Nice one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Barnacle. <laughs> Anyone else? I want to see really Parakeet. Fun. Almost. Same, like, same kind of vibe. It's hard to come from the other way when you know it. When how easy it is for other people. But I couldn't get the, like the teeth, smile, mm. mouth. It's not a parakeet. Bob and a wee cry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Barnacle Bob. <laughs> Question turns just a bit too much. It is. It is. I'm crying. I'm. I'm terrible at this. <laughs> Anyone have any ideas? Hopefully no one else is crying. I <laughs> sincerely apologize if anyone's it's like, not another one. Thanks everybody. Hope my glasses is back on. <laughs> See even the camera's crying, it's going it's going blurry. <laughs> <laughs> Can't watch another moment. Parrot teeth, the carnivorous <laughs> counterpart to the parakeet, yes. You guys don't know about the parrot teeth? Uh, it's bird of prey. Bird of prey. What's another word for that last picture? It's not teeth. But you got like the... Yeah, bird of prey. Bit of a sm like a smaller end of the bird of praise, like a smaller raptor. It's a pretty fast one. Oh, it's a grin. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got it. 
Aronofsky. Yeah. All the clues. You're right. I needed that. I there needed the Horica bomb. <laughs> There you go, Peregrine, Peregrin. <laughs> we all got there in the end. There you go, I thought. I hope people really enjoyed that one. Well, no one cried, hopefully. I'm crying I again, I... see? See, oh, I no. my eye again. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> We're not going to do this bit again. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally like aberrative, <laughs> nothing to do with nature. <laughs> there, I thought it was a little oh, bit fun cool. to end the stream. Thank you for putting that together. That was good. Yeah. I'm enjoying these quizzes we come out with. Get to come up with another one. Got one on the church. local church, a peregrine on the local church. That's nice. When I was at the Restore Nature Now March back in June, there was uh, two or three of them flying over the stage. Yes. It was amazing. That was really cool to hear. I watched that. was really cool. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Barnacle. Yeah. There we go. Cool. So, yeah. what's next for us? Well, Friday, we'll be back Friday. with more Planet Crafter. Yeah, and I'll be joining you. Fingers crossed. I hope so. Nothing goes wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really it's, want to. It was supposed to be both of us last week. <laughs> but it still went to head. You. Still went to head. It was good. Such a great game. Hope you can join us for that. I'll be at half past seven mm. on Friday, UK time. Uh, and then next week, it'll hopefully be the three of us again. Cat mm -hmm. is not here today because she is at... Oh, excuse me. A Christmas meal with her work. So I hope she's enjoying that. Mm. A bit yeah, early Christmas for Christmas part, Christmas meal. Yeah. Oh god, it will be a big that's, that's only a month away when you think about it. Crikey, wow. You know what um, I mean? It's uh, in November, you're right, Barack Obama. That's what I was thinking too. <laughs> so how many more Wednesdays do we have until Christmas? So one maybe like four two, and then three, three, four Christmas Day is a and the fifth. The fifth is the fifth from the fifth week from today is Christmas Day. Wow! So, so there you go. So obviously we're not yeah, going to be on on Christmas Day. Uh, and well, the next like one's the first Christmas Day. Yeah, I'm going for Christmas lunch this Saturday. Says this song. Well, mine's Ooh. not until the uh, the nineteenth of December. That's my Christmas. It's my Whoa. Christmas meal work. So all the shops and everything's in festive mode. Yeah. As soon as Bonfire lights out, get rid of those fireworks, bring in the Christmas trees. 14th for Barnacle. Mm. Exciting. And we were meant to have our uh, guest on today, but when I had my technical issues, we decided to uh, delay it. So we'll have our guest on on the 4th of December. Yeah. Things go, everything goes well. Um, but yes, it's not been cancelled, it's just been slightly pushed back. It'll still happen. Yeah. So yeah, definitely come back for that. Yeah, so please keep hold of all those questions that you have regarding mm. water voles. Yeah. I went looking for water voles and didn't see any. There was a water rail spotted a few minutes before I got to the hide at Skylark. Oh. Of course. I was chatting, I was chatting to uh, somebody there about that and uh, she was really excited to see it, but she couldn't get her camera on it in time because it literally just ran right across in front of her into the reeds. Yeah, I've heard they just yeah, they just whoosh. dart across. Yeah. They're yeah, such shy wee things. Yes, Barnacle. I'm hoping to see one soon. Now that I know where they are. Hmm. Who's the guest? Asked Nathan. Who's the guest? It's my friend Freya, um, who a few weeks ago was out at RSVP on uh, doing some water ball work there. Um, be really nice to have her on. Talk about cool things, wildlife down there, water bowls. Yeah, a fun, fun chat. Should be a lot of fun. Indeed. Yeah. Here we go. And if you couldn't make it to our Friday uh, gaming stream, the recording of that is up on our YouTube channel, so you can go watch the full thing there if you want to go. And along with all of our previous nature chat streams well most of them gaming stream yes most of them <laughs> most of them uh, i've still i've still got 
Uh, episode 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 to edit and put up. Shortly, all of them. <laughs> At some point, they'll happen. <laughs> I'm very busy. I've, I've spent my last two days off uh, decorating my kitchen. So. And as soon as I'm finished here, I'm going downstairs to finish oiling a door. So, uh, wow. That'll be that, that'll no be my off. kitchen. Yeah, that'll be that'll be my kitchen finished. So yes, stage complete. Yeah, next is the living room. <laughs> oh gosh, how much works there? Uh, it's not too bad. It's only the walls to paint there. So oh, okay, I've already got the walls to do, and then that room's finished. And then it's the uh, hallway and landing and stairs. That's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And then it's just bedrooms after that. So. A lot of work, yeah. Make the place nice for Santa. Yes, Barnacle. Yes, it's nice for Santa. If he comes in, he's like, oh, this place is a, it's a dump. I'm not going to give you any presents. That's why I didn't get any presents last year. Oh, no. Because my house was a dump. Because it was a building site. So. Oh. And, I've, and I've blocked off the chimney. So my fireplace is... Oh, well, there's your off. problem, so, yeah. So you, can, you, you can't even get down the... Uh, the chimney. Might still be now. in there for all we know. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Wonder what that knocking was. <laughs> Might even elf would two to That would be amazing, Barnacle Bomb. If you left a couple <laughs> elves to help, that would be great. For Christmas, I just want two little helpers <laughs> to finish me, finish off the living room. <laughs> I think I'll have the living room done before Christmas. Yeah? Yeah, I think I'll have the is living room done. Is that where your chimney is? Christmas. Yeah. Well, it used I to be. Oh, okay. <laughs> like I say, it's blocked off now. We plastered Needle over it. So. Let's please ring the doorbell or something like that instead. <laughs> use the letterbox. Like you can use the letterbox. That's true. There we go. Excellent. Right, folks, thank you so much for joining us. Myself and Nick will be back on Friday at half past seven uh, for more Planet Crafter episode two. Uh, so I hope you can join us for that and then three of us will be back next Wednesday for more nature chat uh, hopefully I'll get out this weekend again and do some more uh, wildlife spotting mm. it should be really, really cool fun. you got any plans? I don't think so, I might try and get out in the snow whilst it's still there yeah, yeah. that'd be quite nice wouldn't it? lovely wildlife hour, that'd be nice yeah, I'll be out yeah. in it tomorrow, I'll be in people's gardens so Shoveling up the snow. Yeah, de definitely going to work tomorrow. Oh, it's, it's already it's already been said. But there we go. <laughs> oh, thank you, Nathan. You hope everyone has a lovely week. Thank you again for all your pictures and videos yeah. and everything, and coming into the Discord. And thank you for joining the stream. It's lovely just to chat to everyone, see everyone's up to. So, thank you, guys. Cool. We'll see you soon, folks. Thank you so much. Have a good week. Bye, everyone.